please turn towards the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Satan died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Clayton, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat as we hear the word of God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men and an unsullied life, the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, 
he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him, through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please have a seat. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Does the promise that the Lord makes to each one of us, and especially, I think this gospel passage, Jill chose very fittingly for Clay's funeral, because in a sense, Clay was that comfort for those who were going through difficult times. A co-worker the other day told me how with the gifts that he had with music, with his joy, with the cares that Clay had for others, he really touched other people's lives. And I'm sure many of you are here because of that. And that's probably why Clay also liked working in the hospital. He was able to touch many hearts as well over there for those who were going through a difficult time. So we are, in a sense, coming here to return that favor to Clay. Well, first of all, we come here to thank our Lord for putting Clay in our lives, for the gift that he was, to remember the good things that he had, and to follow the examples, the good examples that he set for us. But we're also, and this is why a mass is very appropriate, we're also here to pray for Clay's soul. Any, any attachments that he may have, that they may be purified, so that he may be in the full presence of our Lord. going back to the good example that Clay set for us. As a Christian, I was told that he knew his Bible well. And that Jill, when she wanted to know anything about the Bible, she would just go to Clay. Is that right, Jill? Yeah. And that when Clay started practicing his new Catholic faith in 2003, he went all in. He was a lector, so he, he already had a love for scriptures, so very fitting that he was able to read scriptures in mass. He was an extraordinary minister of communion, so he was able to participate in a very special way in the mass as well. He went all in. 
So that, that example we can remember today. He was a man of faith. And especially, and I mentioned this yesterday in the wake, through difficult moments, his faith was what sustained him. A difficult diagnosis that he had, and he was, it was a tough moment for him, for his family, but because he was able to pray about it, to go to, to the beautiful things that God gave him, like the gift of music, he was able to hear God's voice in a song, right? He heard that the, everything was going to be okay, that God was with him, even in these difficult moments, and especially because it was a difficult moment. And that's why, like I shared yesterday, I think that was the key of how he made those six months that he supposedly had left to live, he made that into two years. So brothers and sisters, like I mentioned, we come here to pray for Clay, for his soul, for his family, that they may be strong in these difficult moments. But we're also here to learn the good things that Clay taught us, especially in regards to faith. Brothers and sisters, I understand, and this is usually the case in funerals and weddings, many of us have been away from the church for a good number of months, maybe years. And that's okay. We sometimes need moments like this to be able to remember to have our priorities straight. Our Lord is what sustains us in good times and in bad. And that's why we, we come to him to pray for our brother, to thank the gift of our brother for the gift of our brother, and to also go back and to be able to practice our faith. As we pray for our brother, let us remember that our Lord is always with us. No matter the difficulties, no matter the, the suffering, we know because our Lord wanted to go through that same suffering. And more than that, he went all the way, as we can see on the crucifix here in the front. Even though he was afraid, even though it was difficult for him too, for Jesus, he embraced his cross with the arms wide open. So we come to our Lord for comfort. So I will invite you, brothers, in the next, brothers and sisters, in the next couple of days and weeks, to go to the Lord, to pray in the silence of your room, in the silence of this church, to keep praying for a brother, but more than that, to learn from clay, to have faith as the center of our lives. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord, we join our prayers to his.
for Clay, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray Let to us the, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Clay, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, who, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Our often... How great thou art. Please join us if you know the words. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Clayton, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Clayton, whom you have called from this world to yourself.
grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
they should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Be distributing the Eucharist to my left side. Reception of Holy Communion is reserved to those Catholics who are in full communion with the Catholic Church, are not conscious of any grave unconfessed sin, and have kept the Eucharistic fast of one hour. If not, you are not prepared to receive communion at this time, you can ask for a blessing instead by coming forward and crossing your arms in front of your chest.
St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the May God rebuke you and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Clayton may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let's pray in silence for a few seconds. Please join us in the song of farewell. To you, O Lord, we command the soul of Clayton, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant him everlasting peace. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> 